Behind me, I have a 930 Turbo Porsche, and we're gonna build an exhaust for it in two days. We have a really crazy one for you today. Uh, I have some two very familiar faces. We got Mark from Proper Fabrications and Peter from Speed Academy. And we got his Porsche here, which is pretty nuts. So Peter came to us and uh, unfortunately, this car had a different branded exhaust. And that's not really the problem. The problem is, what was the problem? It didn't have a catalytic converter. It was sneaky mm. and I needed something that I, you know, was a little bit more modern. Yeah, so the car's not gonna smell anymore. But uh, the problem is the tips also need to look good. So Mark has a good idea of what he's gonna come up with and we only have two days to get this done. So, or else we lose the shop. So we're gonna make this happen and show you guys how to build an exhaust in two days, let's go. We have all these beautiful pieces, but we're very limited on the space we have, the space we don't have to put it all in. So we're gonna do a little bit of creative accounting here and cheat the system just a little bit, but not so that it's unpleasing to the eye. So a little bit of looking, a little bit of thinking. Look, 45, so that should be good. Cause that's still nice in the middle, yeah. coming out on that yeah. angle. That looks good there. Today, we are working on Peter's beautiful little 87 Turbo Porsche. Uh, we have a plethora of vibrant materials to use on this thing. Uh, some too big, some not gonna work, some unnecessary, some definitely necessary. We are gonna go through the whole process from start to finish on picking and choosing, modifying, cutting, grinding, welding, you name it. We're gonna do it, stay tuned. All right, uh, so we're using some transitions here. We have round to oval, and we have from two inch to four inch concentric reducer. Uh, they are a little bit too big for our application, so I need to cut them down. Normally, we could use a chop saw, we could use a band saw, we could use a zip disc, we could use a grinder, we can use whatever you got. But to do comfortably, uh, I'm going to show you a little trick that I do. We're going to cut everything on the band saw, and then we can remove the burr after. Uh, but these are a few things that I do to make life a little bit easier when you're cutting stuff, especially that's on an angle like that. Uh, we have a spare piece of four inch tube here. We're gonna tack our reducer to the tube. Then we can comfortably lay this on the chop saw and cut it. All right. Okay, so four nice tacks, that'll keep that good. We have a three inch piece of tube we have our three inch round to oval. I only want to use this much section of this because it's just too long to fit where we're trying to put it. So we're going to tack this guy to here and then it can comfortably go into the chop saw. We've got our lines here. We've got our chop saw here. I need this piece in the middle, so we're gonna make sure we're cutting on the outside of the line. And our chop saw comes down, that looks pretty good. Watch your eyes. We got our piece cut, a little rough, but with all our nice tools around here, we'll be able to sand everything down, make it nice, and then we can get ready to cut our other piece. Most of our big burr is now gone. We can take our uh, deburring tool. It's nice. You can see it's a little different, but it's okay. Because of the space we don't have, we have to cheat a little bit here and there. But by the time we weld it, uh, and with the back purging, this will be pretty much seamless on the inside and nothing to worry about. Sometimes you gotta cheat a little bit here and there, lift, bend, pull, twist, tuck, cut, weld, and then you get what you need. Let's go. 
have a look at the car. Not that straight. So we're gonna have a little little bend here, right there, and then we'll have another look. This is why I like using the belt sander because the burr literally just peels out. It's nice. It's a little bit more uh, uh, technical when you try to make things look, look and, and be yeah. nice. Not everybody wants, it's just time, right? How much time you want to spend on it? You, you want to yeah. do it quick, you're going to bang it out. It might not be as nice as it could if you took a few more. Like if we didn't think about, well, what if we use these and we just jumped into the first idea, then we're trying to make clearance we didn't even have. So you take a few more minutes to think about, okay, well, what if we try this? What if we try that? And then, you know, you come to a better, a better conclusion, a better uh, idea. To achieve the same 45 degree, right? It's gonna have to go along the back straight. Absolutely. So that way when you look at it from the back of the car, you don't have one tip up or one tip down. You have both of them at the same plane. The same plane, but this one over here is like right, this. right. So. so I'm going to cut this guy. We're gonna cut him here in the middle, and then we'll flip it around, and then this will be our little oh, kick yeah, little that we need to come over with. I'll tack those onto this, and then we'll come back. We've cut our 90 degree bend, cut it at 45, and then this is what's gonna allow us to get over to where that exhaust pipe fits best. Also, tack together our ovals. These are cool, these little ovals. They, uh, they make that center line radius a lot tighter than the traditional oval mandrel bends. And we are limited for space in the back of this car. So these really come in handy. Doesn't matter what our top is. Pretty symmetrical, so let's put our guy on here. That's good. So we're just fuse tacking these together in honor of our 87 Porsche. I put the amps at 87, and it seems to work pretty good. So let's go test fit again. thing I'd like to do, so we're gonna cut the straight section off of this, then we can tack it to our piece here, and then we can fit it perfectly in the cutout of the bumper, and then make sure that everybody's where they need to go. See my favorite, wanna see my favorite? I love it. Now the only reason I keep looking at that, we're just looking to see what side of the pipe might be nicer, because then aesthetically, it's a little bit uh, more proper. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Now, I think we can get away with maybe tacking our tube to the flange and then we can set our depth, and then we'll mark it, and then we can pull it back out, we'll cut it, then we can mock it back up, and then we'll figure out where we're gonna put our tacks, and then we are almost there. I think I would like to break this apart again and give it a different twist. That's why I only put small little tacks on stuff so that we can bust it apart, and then we can re-tack it in a better position. You don't necessarily have to go with the first idea or the first tack together piece, it's 
spend a little time, make it a little bit more nice. So we're just having a look here. We want to be, we want to be in the middle of our cutout. So we're looking to make sure that our gaps on either side are the same. Our gaps on top look good. We want to make sure that when you look at the exhaust from the side, that you're on a nice plane. So we've had to do a little lift, bend, pull, twist, tuck here and get it over. But I think, uh, I think we're looking good. Okay, so the name of the game here, always symmetrical. This is what's going to be seen out the back of Pete's Porsche. And we wanna to try to keep things as symmetrical as possible. But due to the space constraints we have behind this back bumper, we're gonna to need to make a little different. They will look the same, but we're not gonna be able to match the same amount of pie cuts before the transition. So we gotta come a little bit away from the motor in order to fit our big Jesse cat uh, and then make it nicely to the exhaust pipe. So we're gonna bust our guy back apart. We're gonna add one more oval pie cut here. This is gonna kick our pipe away from the motor and then we're going to correct it with a piece of round and that's going to give us the room we need between the bumper and the motor to put our big catalytic converter. So I'm not even going to cut, I'm just going to reheat the tack weld and then pop off our pipe. going to come down we want to see from our top view what our tip is going to look like either we're going to come out with it a little bit more or we're going to leave it uh, but let's have a look and see where we're at it's a visual thing you want you know what I mean you want to have something nice and symmetrical and quality we'll leave that guy on there let's put it back up in the air I'm going to tack this cat together we are going to mock up our outlet portion from the turbo. So we have a new flange and we've cut a little piece of material. So we need to try to move over where the cat sits in a better position. So where our tip is going to come out here, just like this side, we are going to make the cat in line with the height of the exhaust so that I can actually come down a little bit more. And it'll still have tons of ground clearance, so we're not worried about anything there. Uh, but in order to meet from turbo outlet to cat inlet, we have to do a little down and over, and uh, we're using our favorite materials. Now, being that this is a four bolt flange, you have to remember to take into consideration where the hardware goes, because if you put the bend over a bolt, you're not going to be able to get to it. You might be able to fit a hex in there. This is the larger uh, three inch outlet with the four bolt flange. So it gives you a little bit more room, but when you use the smaller flange, it's not so roomy. So for this one, we're okay. Because where this pipe is going to go, we'll still be able to access the hardware. Comes down good. The other reason it has to be where it is is because in order for this guy to be where it needs to be, which I think is about there, uh, that just makes it easier. Now we just only have a little guy that's gotta go yeah. like that. I was trying to make them as identical to each other as possible, but because of where those constraints are, we don't have them here, but we have this cat that's making the pipe have to come back more. We ran into a little bit of an issue with the exhaust cutouts on the bumper. Uh, turns out the previous owner of the bumper had done some massaging on the passenger side of the bumper that has changed where the tips would have went had we not noticed there was a missing, uh, some missing material. So uh, this was one of the pieces that I had mucked up in there. Unfortunately, we have to come a little bit more down with the exhaust. So I was able to take some 60 degree bends and 
cut them appropriately, now we have a dropped down version of this. So we're gonna take this all back to the car. We're gonna re-mock it up. Uh, and now we have to work with this extra little gap that's uh, on the bumper. Not a big deal. We can get it fixed later. Body shop, it's fiberglass, paint, whatever. Um, but in order for me to give something symmetrical, uh, this is what I have to do right now. I could have cut this apart and put a little sliver in it, which is what most people would probably do. Uh, I'm not most people. So we do a little bit more difficult. We're gonna make a new piece, not a problem. And we'll keep getting this exhaust put together. This is, this is our, our issue here. The, the bumper has had the material trimmed out of it. So if you come and you look at the other side, you've got more material here. So we set this original gap according to this side. But then when we came over here, we didn't notice this at first. So when we put our tip in there, we were way too high. And when you look at the car from the back, you can see that this is lower than this because we made this gap here nice. And then having this material missing makes you think you have to lift your tips up, but that we're gonna fix the bumper at a, at a, at a later date. So right now, we're just trying to make all these big pieces comfortable. So I like to get the tip situated and then make everybody else go. So because we had a little bit of a failure on the first attempt, no big deal. Uh, we're just gonna reset the tip and then we have to change how everybody is in the middle. So it's a good thing we are at Vibrant Headquarters with a floor full of parts over there. But it's okay. I make for fix. Story of my life. What do you got there for a measurement, Pete? Just about an inch and a half. Okay, let's see what the other side is. An inch and a half. Inch and a half. You hear that, folks? Inch and a half and an inch and a half. Yeah, inch and a half. It's almost and like it's almost like we did this before. Inch and a half. We got it all mocked up. We haven't welded our flanges. Those are going to be our last things that we uh, what we do. We're going to weld the entire assemblies tomorrow. We'll prep it. We'll wash it. We'll clean it. We'll brush it. We'll make it all nice and purty. We'll add some uh, filler get all our seams welded up, and then we'll finish with hanger. our hangers. Our hanger is only gonna be one. And uh, then this bad boy, oh, O2 sensor. We're gonna use our new heat sink style O2 bungs. Uh, nice saddle style too, so it'll sit comfortably on the three inch OD of the tube. It makes it a lot easier to weld. And I think that'll be about it. So tomorrow, you come back now because we got more stuff to do. Yeah, all right, good job, team. The next day. Good morning. Uh, welcome back to day two of Peter's Porsche exhaust. Uh, yesterday, we managed to get all our tubes mucked up. Uh, this is gonna be his exhaust system with our G-Sport Cat, and this is gonna be the wastegate dump tube. Uh, the idea was to have a nice different style of tip coming out the back of the car. So uh, we went with the oval. The oval really gives it a, a real nice look, like the lines of the back of the car, the lights, the bumper, the shape, everything kind of worked really, really well. Even the cutouts in the bumper work really nice with, with the oval. So uh, this morning we are going to do a little bit of prep work. We're going to finish just our tips in a nice brushed finish. We have our nice multi-tool over there. We're going to tape off some of our parts here. Then we're going to polish everybody and we're gonna make just our tip sections nice and polished like this guy. And then uh, once that's done, we can wash everything. Then we can get ready to start welding. So for these, we are gonna back purge. Um, so we're gonna to touch uh, on a little bit of those uh, steps and we gotta get the welder set up. We gotta get our pipes polished. So stick around, we'll get some stuff done. So we're just gonna use some masking tape. Just trying not to uh, brush the whole thing because that's not what we were gonna do. We're just trying to get the tips brushed. So a little bit of tape here will help keep the finish only on this pipe. 
because that's the only one that we want to polish up. I'm doubling up on the tape because it makes it a little bit more resilient to what that belt is going to try to do, but it's only masking tape. It might bust off, but that's okay. I can put more. Okay, so leaves a nice brushed finish. Now we can peel our tape off and then we'll get ready to wash. Okay, so got our wastegate dump tacked up. Uh, now we can do some back purging. I'm gonna use our inch and a half purge plug here. We're not welding the wastegate flange yet. This will be the last thing that gets welded. So we're just gonna focus on all the other welds here. Then we can put it back to the car. We can make sure everybody's good. And then this is gonna get mounted to the wastegate. That way we don't warp the flange and have an issue with it. So I'm gonna turn on our purge. So this is the top of our pipe. So let's start and do our start stops on the bottom. Right here. Lots of argon. We're so gonna weld. When you finish your little section of weld, try to let the gas coverage flow for a few seconds. This machine is, uh, I think it's automatic, but if you tap the pedal, sometimes it'll make it go longer and then you'll reduce the color because you've got the argon covering the uh, hot material. So I lied. The machine does have post flow control. So I've turned it up, which helps to keep the gas coverage longer over the weld as it cools. And then I'm trying not to end up with too many colors, but a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of purple is okay. What we don't want to see is burnt weld like that. We don't want to have a dirty gray. That's not nice. So good cup, good argon coverage, back purging from the inside. A little bit of patience, we'll get there. Okay, so we've finished majority of the welding on our wastegate tube. We've got good gas coverage, we've got nice colors. So since this is back purged, all the welds on the inside are just as nice as the outside. And this is gonna minimize any chance for the weld to fail, to crack, uh, or to give us any headache. So we haven't, again, we haven't welded our wastegate flange yet because this is gonna be, this is just our, my last resort. If I go and I put this back on the car and I don't like where it sits, I can do a little massage here. If not, you're married to it, then you gotta cut somewhere and then you're doing some, some silliness. So I leave one weld for last and then we're gonna finalize that it's good. The fitment, we'll take the wastegate off, we'll bolt it back on here, we'll refill everybody with argon, we can finish that one last weld, and then we'll move on to our uh, turbo side exhaust, and same process, we're gonna back purge, uh, we're gonna, oh no, that's it, we're gonna back purge, and we're gonna back purge, and then we're gonna back purge some more, because if you don't back purge, then everybody on the internet has an opinion. So, here we are, back purging, welding, and let's keep the ball rolling. We had a look, our wastegate pipe is good. So we took our wastegate off, 
We're gonna clamp this to here. We're gonna weld it, and then that's gonna ensure that we don't have any warpage, we don't have any leakage. So we're gonna put this to the side for now. We'll do this after. We're gonna focus on our turbo side exhaust. We have our G Sport 5 inch cat with our stainless reducers. So we're gonna have to weld our cat up first, and then we're gonna proceed to weld the rest of all the pie cuts and the tube and the bends. Uh, we'll back purge this guy as well. And in like a minute, you'll see the final product, but it's not a minute for me, so stay tuned. So what I'm doing is just tacking uh, in between all the tacks. The more tacks you have, the less it might want to move as you're welding. It is pretty critical that when you have two pipes butt together, uh, that they are flat with one another. If you have a gap, the pipe will tend to close the gap as you're welding, or you kind of get screwed and it opens up even more. So it is important to make sure that everything you put together uh, is as flat as possible. That will help to minimize the warpage. So we got a few more spots we can tack. So all I'm doing is just flat pedal down, just fusing the two materials to one another, not adding any filler. Uh, if, you, if you have to, you can. If you use filler, sometimes when you go to weld over, it'll leave a little bit of an unsightly bump. So if you just find the right angle and the right amperage, you can just fuse your butts together and then it makes it, makes it less likely to warp as you finish welding the entire pipe. Okay, so this is cooled down now. Uh, we're going to loosen it from the wastegate so that we can put it back in. But I just wanted to show the benefits and the outcome when you back purge. So you can see we've got nice gold color on the inside. We've got good penetration. Uh, this guy is done. We can put the wastegate back on the car. We'll tighten its clamps. And then we just got to finish our exhaust portion. Okay, so we're going to take our stainless steel exhaust hanger rod and we're gonna bend it up a little bit and we're gonna weld it um, across the back of the catalytic converter and then have a nice rubber hanger that mounts to the motor. And this is gonna help to support any of that hanging weight from the turbo as the pipe goes over to the passenger side. So we're not gonna, we don't have anything fancy. We just got a nice little vise. We're gonna use a little bit of heat. We're gonna use a little bit of leverage. Now, it's only a propane torch, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna get the thing cherry red as if it were like an oxyacetylene torch set up, but this is what we got here today. So we're gonna take our half inch hollow tube here. Just gonna start, hold it down. That looks good. So we're gonna cool it down and we'll take it back to the car and we'll mark where we're gonna cut. One of our hangers bent into place. It'll go into our stiffening hanger and then we're gonna weld majority of this material to the cat body so that it's got a lot of surface area it's welded to. Then we're gonna take our other hanger here. We're gonna end up cutting it.
are gonna end up going together once this gets cut off, this gets cut off. So these portions are gonna be welded to the cat's body. This portion is going into the rubber stiffening hanger and then we'll take it on the car and then pull it out and then we can finish welding. We gotta put a couple O2 bungs, one or two. This we do, we do this for style points. <laughs> So this is the idea anyways. I'm going to tack all our hanger rods together into the cat. And then we can take the whole assembly out and do our O2 bungs and our final bit of flange welding. We're gonna put two bung holes here. We're gonna fill them with bungs. So the idea here is one will be for the wideband uh, into the ECU. The other one will be for the dyno if necessary uh, when Pete goes to take it to get tuned. So we're gonna put the O2 sensors not in front of another because if you do something like this, the secondary sensor is gonna suffer. The signal of air is gonna get split around the, the probe of the first O2 and it'll bypass the O2 you put behind. So it's a better idea to put them beside each other. That way, both O2 sensors or whatever, the single O2 sensor will have uninterrupted flow. Critical, important part to tuning and maintaining your vehicle's uh, uh, excitement is to make sure air fuel is always very good. So we got our downpipe portion here on the bench again. We tacked our flange on the car so we could set the position of everything. Uh, this was Pete's old exhaust so instead of taking the turbo off and bolting this to the flange of the turbo, I'm gonna use the uh, other flange that was on the old exhaust. We've clamped that together. This will help to, again, minimize the warping. Uh, we've got our two O2 bungs here. They're tacked on. We're gonna, this is already filling with argon, so we're just gonna start welding everybody up. Our hangers, our bungs, our flange, and then that's pretty much it. So uh, let's do some more welding. You can see we got lots of tungsten sticking out because we're going to have to go in between the hardware and the pipe. So very carefully we're going to maneuver through that, but you need to have the tungsten out in order to get it in between there. So don't forget to run the argon over the hot weld. That way it'll cool and it'll have a nice finish and not be burnt and not look, not look yuck. smiling because we're done we don't have to do no more welding here's how I like to do the exhaust hangers making sure we get good coverage over the heaviest item in this case it's the catalytic converter so this will be supported in the factory spot on the back of the engine we put our rubber stiffening hanger and now now the the weight of the exhaust won't be pulling down on the turbo and all the piping connected to the turbo because it's supported from the middle. So we got our two O2 bungs in place. Uh, we're just gonna wait for this to cool down. That way we, when we take this off, we don't have any issues. But other than that, we could probably give it another wipe and put it on and we might be starting this thing up today. Okay, so after two long days, we are finished with Pete's Porsche exhaust. Uh, we made as symmetrical of a look as we could get. 
Uh, we used these wonderful little oval pie cuts that really helped to keep things a lot tighter. We had a plethora of materials as you would have saw on the floor. Uh, so the mandrel bent oval pipes just were a little bit too big for the application. We were trying to fit it into a tight space. So uh, on this particular car, I started with the wastegate tube because this was the hardest of the two. And then I tried to match as best as I could on the passenger side. So we got our big, beautiful Jesse Cat. We used our 60 degree mandrel three inch 90s. We used our three inch oval to round transitions. We used all our 15 degree pie cuts and then we finished the tips off with the leftover sections of the, uh, of the mandrel bends from the oval bends. Other than that, we are sealed. We have O2 bungs in. We got a nice stiffening hanger. This, this guy is fairly solid to the whole car. It's not going to move. It's got enough rubber that it'll expand and contract as temperatures heat up and cool down. It's going to be great for minimizing vibration through to the car because when you have a motor like this that makes a deep roar, uh, sometimes you can transmit those exhaust pulses into the vehicle. So we tried to do everything to keep it as stiff without being overly stiff and keep it looking nice. So I'm, I'm excited to hear it. We'll get Pete to fire it up. And it's gonna be even more exciting to hear this thing let it rip on the road. So thank you, Vibrant. Thank you, Speed Academy, for allowing me to come and do this with you guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And if you guys enjoyed what you see, you got any questions, you're always encouraged to go into the comments, ask, say, we're gonna read it, we'll reply. Uh, if you need to know part numbers on specific parts, let us know, there's an email, there's something in the top right corner or top left corner, wherever it is. Click like, subscribe, and hopefully we'll do this again. Thank you very much, we'll see you guys later.